this lesson, we will begin our discussion on raising of capital by way of debentures. Now, in the previous lesson, we focused on raising of capital in the context of equity in relation to public companies. In this lesson, the focus shifts to that of private companies. Now, in the beginning of the previous lesson, uh, you would have recalled I mentioned the fact that in terms of public companies, the requirements as well as the regulations in place are much more onerous than that of private companies. By and large, while this is true, you'll notice at the completion of this extensive lesson on debentures that the same could be said in a different context in relation to private companies. Having said that, let's jump right in to what we can consider as debentures, um, what the requirements are and how we classify them, followed by uh, the ways and means in which parties are safeguarded in terms of any liquidation that might happen later on. Firstly, um, in Latin, debentures refers to money owed to me. And essentially, that is the premise that we use in relation to how a party is safeguarded, how a party creates a charge, so to speak, on an investment uh, that he makes, on a loan, essentially, that he makes to a particular company. Now, what's interesting is when we consider debentures, this is in relation to private companies. And while there is no definition as such, um, Section 738 of the Companies Act of 2006, in fact, talks about it. And I urge you to have a look at how or rather what context in which the Companies Act looks at it. But if we consider uh, a precedent case in relation to Levi and Abercoris Slate and Slab Company uh, in 1887, um, Justice Chitty had outlined quite succinctly what he felt um, debentures are. Uh, in essence, he noted um, inter alia that a debenture is in essence a document which creates a debt on the one hand or acknowledges it. Um, and any document that fulfills either of these conditions could be classified as a debenture. But quite simply, in terms of uh, regular day-to-day -day business, a debenture could be considered as simply a secured loan. Now, having said that, um, there are several features and classifications of debentures or characteristics, so to speak, of debentures that we will go through throughout this lesson. Uh, but to begin with, we can classify or we can fundamentally distinguish debentures as either being redeemable or irredeemable. On the one hand, a redeemable debenture is one, as the name itself suggests, which is payable on demand or on a fixed date. Um, and once redeemed, this has the same contractual um, liability as any other um, context, and it can be rescinded unless otherwise specified. What's interesting here is even in the context of a debenture, it really falls within the ambit of civil law, insofar as the fact that the parties themselves have to decide on the terminology as well as the terms and regulation of such terms. On the other hand, an irredeemable debenture is one which is also allowed in the Companies Act of 2006 and the terms in itself while being in writing is inconclusive because the conduct and the context of the parties and the matters at hand is what's applicable, what's important. Now you'd notice that depending on the size and depending on the functions of the company, a debenture can be for example quite small in nature or much like in a debenture stock by virtue of several lenders getting involved. And the bigger the number of lenders, the more onerous, of course, the requirements may be. But what's interesting here is that when we look at the way in which a debenture functions, as well as the safeguards afforded to any secured creditor in this context, it is in fact giving rise to a trust deed, which secures said interests. Now, as such, much like in any other trust instrument, in the case of a debenture, in this case, in, in relation to the trust deed that's created, it provides the obligations to pay the principles, as well as provides a security on its own for the loan itself, in case something were to happen. So, by and large, you could consider debentures as charges over a company. 
Now, this might seem similar or, or familiar to you, rather, if you've already gone through subjects such as the law of trust and property law. That was an introduction to raising of capital by virtue of debentures in relation to private companies. Now, from the next lesson onwards, we will have a look at further classifications of debentures with primary emphasis on how it creates a charge over either fixed or floating assets and how parties are safeguarded during liquidation.